Aloha, you are watching F5 Web Media On Demand, and welcome to another edition of the F5 Technology Demonstration Series, or as we call it here internally, the Tech Demos. This is where we show some of the great features in the big IP from an insider point of view. And today, we're lucky to have Jose Gonzalez, Senior Product Development Manager. Hi, Jose. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me. So you had such a great time showing the traffic shaping, the client-side traffic shaping. You decided to join us again, huh? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so I understand that you'll be showing us a bit of the Big IP Edge client today? Yes. We're going to see the Edge client package now that we have for the Big IP running on Windows 7. Well, let's get going. Okay, so just to get started, this um, package can be created so that it will start when you log into Windows. But in this particular case, I just want to show how you can start the package. So here it is, our Big IP Edge client, and we're going to start it up. And so what you were saying is when the user boots up his machine, it'll automatically launch and start running in the background. That's what happens to me when I work at home. Yes, exactly. It'll start running and it'll detect the environment that it's in. So for example here, it's the Edge client has detected that it's connected to the LAN on the corporate network and there's no need for the tunnel. So in this particular case, the client is configured with the location awareness, which we call AutoConnect. So the VPN will get established every time it is needed when you're away from your corporate network. So when I plug into the corporate network and it's running, it'll recognize that I'm on the corporate domain and it will not establish a connection. But when I undock or go wireless or boot up from home, it'll recognize I'm not on the domain and it'll immediately establish a secure tunnel for me. That's right. And these can be configured by the administrator based on the domains that identified your corporate network. So in this particular case, you can overwrite the auto connect function if you want to use the connect, force the connect or disconnect if you don't want to use it because maybe you're not wanting to do any work at that particular moment. So here we have, just to illustrate the point on how it behaves when you have multiple interfaces, I wanted to show the setup here. We have two interfaces on this VMware machine. This interface is operating as a LAN interface. Okay. And this one is operating as a wireless interface. So Ethernet is the LAN and Ethernet 2 is the wireless. Is the wireless interface. Gotcha. So if, for example, you take the situation where you undock or you disconnect from the corporate LAN and uh, you go into sort of a roaming mode, we're going to show here what happens when we disconnect the interface. Now, in, in, in recent years, the SSL VPNs, one of their you know, positionings was being clientless. Oh, so we'll get to that in a second. So I see this is... This is basically detected that we need to establish the tunnel because we're no longer connected to corporate and you can see a couple of things. Number one, you have our notification icon telling you that you need attention that is required because you need to enter your credentials. I haven't configured any credential check-in for this demonstration so I can just log in here directly. And credentials can be cached so the user doesn't need to enter it every time? Yes, there are certain options that we have enabled for depending on policies. Got so it. here the, the tunnel is established and you can see that the application hides in the tray. It's meant to be a tray application and it behaves as such. And the little red ball is fully red rather than slightly grayed. Right, meaning that we're connected. We have access to the, the tray menu here. And we can bring up the console and you can basically look at the traffic that it's going on on the network right now. So if, for example, now you're roaming, you have a wireless interface and there is an outage to the wireless network, you can certainly show that behavior by, let's say let, we take out the wireless interface and see what happens. Let's just pretend that we lost wireless connectivity here. Oh. And so now there's no connectivity. And there it goes, yeah. Yeah. The client detects that there's no connectivity and tells you and then you have a banner here also. So if it was minimized to tray, well, you get the pop-up. So now... We reconnect back to the LAN? We'll try to reconnect. And if we wanted to get more information, we can actually look at details here and take a look at our logs. And we can filter here on events. 
let's see we just want information here we can see that our tunnel is broken and that basically there's no network connectivity here mm -hmm. so let's enable the wireless interface now and let's see what happens you see the icon now is detected the event it'll reestablish the tunnel so any connections that you had running wow it's fast should be able to reconnect yeah connection is restored so now what happens if we reconnect to the LAN yeah good question let's enable our corporate interface this could represent an event of you docking your workstation or just connecting to an Ethernet directly so let's open the client here this is the traffic that was just previously and now it says LAN detected disconnected and we're connected directly to the domain yes now you no longer need the tunnel and so where in the big IP GUI would uh, an administrator get this and deploy it? Okay, we actually deployed this as an MSI package. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it actually can be distributed in that way. So let me open up the console here. So in the admin console, we go under our access policy mm -hmm. and we go to our connectivity profiles. These are associated with your virtual server. We're going to take the profile that I'm using for this demo, which is called Tech Demo. Got it. And here we have some general configuration for the network access, and we have client configuration. So here we can basically configure the servers that we want to pre populate on the client when it's deployed, and we can actually configure the DNS suffixes that we're going to define to be our corporate networks for mm. location awareness we have the ability to cache credentials. If you have a policy that you don't like, we have the ability to cache the password for a specific amount of time. Here we have enable user password caching for 240 minutes here. We can configure the client to auto update or prompt the user if needed or not update the components. With the browser-based connectivity, and I would imagine with the client-based connectivity, you can still do the things like the strong endpoint security and, and pre-log on checks, making sure that the host device abides by whatever the corporate security policy is in terms of antivirus, firewall, registration keys, and other identifiable information. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of using endpoint checks with either a web client or a native client like the one we're using here. So he configures the client here, it puts multiple servers in, and then yes. where you, would he go? Well, another thing that I can just show you here real quick is that you can actually customize a client. Hmm. And by customizing the, the client, you can customize it in different languages. So you can have different packages. But you can basically customize it. We have customers that are interested in having their own logos and their own text that describes the client. And here we have, uh, for example, we have a generic icon. Oh yeah. Show with a client. So here now you can, once you customize it, you can go in and download the package by going to Big IPH Client for Windows link and you can select what you need here. For this purpose you can only pick, for example, the standalone Big Edge Client, mm -hmm. which would be sufficient to, to demonstrate the functionality that I've shown here. We also have an option for the standalone client here, which is auto launch the Edge client when you log on to Windows. In regarding your question regarding policies, you can actually see I have a simple policy here where we can classify the client and I can show that we have another feature here where we can actually lock the screen based off user inactivity. Mm. Most corporations don't want to have remote users leaving their laptops idle. And so we force uh, locking of screen if there's no user activity. Configure this in our VPE under the cache session control here. Oh, okay. So you can see that if you check for clients, we check the OS here, I'm basically picking on Windows 7. Right. And I can do my antivirus check and then I can apply some cache session control. And what I have said here is that we can lock the workstation after one minute of, of inactivity. So when the tunnel is established, one minute of no activity will cause the screen to lock. And so the dialer, this client, we, we, we introduced it with FirePass a number of years ago, and we've pretty much updated it now a couple of iterations to the current Big IP 10.1 code set. We'll log in again.
So it does the Smart Connect. It gives you different modes of access. You can get dynamic access from pretty much anywhere. The strong endpoint security. You know, one of the things I was asking you earlier, I, I started to, and then we got into the demo, was in the early days of SSL VPN, we would position SSL VPNs as clientless. You would just need a browser, and that's all you need. But it seems as if the client is kind of making a comeback in some ways. So certainly users can still use their browser, of course, but what would be some of the advantages of having the client installed? I think some of the, the, the advantages that we've seen here is we can have the custom branding, right? We can have the for PCs that are managed by corporations, they may not be able to install all components through the web browser, so they can actually push updates through MSI. And, well, oh, here you go. See, the, the screen locked after one minute of activity here. Perfect. We didn't even expect that, did we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were saying? Yeah, so one of the other aspects is that Companies want to be able to customize the client. They want to give it their own look and feel and have the conveniences of a secure remote access solution without having to install any components on the fly at times. So the client here is running on a, on a Windows 7 machine, so it's fully supported on Windows 7, Windows XP. And Vista. And Vista, okay. Yes. Anything else? I can show you some other uh, functionality that we have here on the client, such as details. You can see details of the connection, the type of encryption that you're using. At this point you can see that. Oh yeah. See that here we can show you the routing table, your IP configuration, and other miscellaneous text such version and uh, what, what is configured on your client. Oh you know the one thing I did want to show real quick, if, if you go back to the client. Yep. What do you want to see? And so say a user is having issues connecting to one of their, one of their big IP edge devices that might be in a particular data center, maybe the data center has had an outage, how would they go to another... Another know, server. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. So we have a change server button here. Got it. And we can basically go select from a, a pre-populated list. Which or, was the list we did in the GUI. That's correct. Or we can basically go ahead and type our own here. Mm. So if I pick a different one, for example, I can try to pick this one. And what, what the client will do is that it will try to check to make sure that the, the server is available before it actually goes and connects. Mm -hmm. So you can see that here. Because we're connected, you want, the client is, wants to make sure that you do want to terminate the existing tunnel before it establishes a, another tunnel with a different server. In this case, I'm just going to cancel it. And I saw FirePass on there. And this is reverse compatible or backwards compatible to FirePass also, so they can use it if they have a FirePass device, they've just installed a new Big IP Edge gateway, their end users can use this client for either box. Yes, we, we try to be backward compatible to all our remote access products and FirePass is one of them and it's supported. Excellent. Wow, the new Big IP Edge client, that's pretty cool, Jose. Thank you, Peter. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Big IP Edge client available in the Big IP Edge Gateway version 10.1 from F5 Networks. Thanks for joining us again, Jose. This was very interesting. And thanks to you, our viewers. Thanks for watching. And so for Jose, this is Peter Silva for F5 Networks On Demand. Visit us at www.f5.com.